All right, we are almost done. Again, since we have two ch charges here, we can now find the potential energy. Well, there it is, KQ1, Q2 over R, no absolute values. I'm going to do one again, brute force. Potential energy, I'm going to do the, t the, let's do the bottom one since we're here, equals, uh, sorry, K, which is 9 e to the ninth, times Q1, which is 8 e to the minus 6. Now we have to have that negative sign, e to the minus 6 over R, which is 4 e to the minus 3. Well, this cancels out one of those, so this becomes minus 3. Uh, this right here, we're going to take away a, two, a 4 out of that, which gives me a 2. Uh, 2 times 2 is 4, times 9 is 36. Oops, negative 36. There was a negative sign in there. And 9 minus 9 is 10 to the 0. So it's just 30, negative 36 joules. Here's the fast way. You knew there had to be. There's joules per coulomb. So potential energy equals QV, coulombs, times joules per coulomb, which is negative 2 e to the minus 6, I'm getting tired of writing that, I may just go to the, just putting that micro in, times 1.8 times 10 to the 7th, and that gives me 2 times 1.8 is negative 3.6, and that gives me times 10 to the 1, which is negative 36 joules. That is the easy way of doing this. So let's do the next one the easy way. So here, my potential energy equals Q times V, which is um, negative 2 microcoulombs times negative 1.8 times 10 to the seventh joules per coulomb. Again, that's a positive 3.6. 10 to the 1 equals a positive 36 joules. Now let's talk about why we have a negative on one side and a positive on the other. And then actually, if we look at this real quickly, since we're here, potential energy is just like voltage. You just add it up. So it's PE1 plus PE2, which in this case is zero joules. Why is that? Well, if I take this negative two microcoulombs and I bring it there with any path whatsoever, it's going to be attracted by one and repelled by the other. And it's going to take me zero net work to get it there. I'm not saying it won't take me any work. I'll have to, put, I'll have, to have positive work sometimes, negative work the other. If we look at the individual charges, the negative charge I'm going to have to push against, so that's positive work, and the eight microcoulombs will be negative work because it wants to go this way, I'll have to hold it back. Now let me show you a way for me to uh, give you another example of why zero net work. I'm going to go ahead and make just a reference point here. Go ahead and uh, okay. Well then I'm just going to make you know, just a mountain range of sorts. I have to go down, then I have to go back up and come back down. Well, let's say that we start with the object over here. I'm going to put start. This is obviously gravitation, but it's still going to work. Well, I'm going to have to go uphill to this point, so this is positive work. Well, then gravity is going to pull it down, so by me, this is negative work. Well, then I'm going to have to push it uphill positive work again all the way to that point then gravity is going to do negative work again but if I get back to this point then my change of potential energy equals zero because I'm back at the same height or this point or this point or anywhere else that I end up there but if this continues to go down say it's a hill there will be a force but there's no potential energy to get there likewise here there is a force. So obviously the repulsion of the six is greater than the attraction of the eight, which should make sense because it's closer and since it's an R squared law, distance matters more than amount, especially since they're very close. I mean, if this was a very, very big charge, it would win. 
But again, this is how it's possible to have no change of potential energy or no work done to get it there and still a force. It's actually possible to have the other as well. I mean, if you think about that point right there, it has zero force because it's balancing, but there was work done to get it there. Now, the last thing that we need to talk about, because we're pretty much done here, two things. One, potential energy. Let me give you the definition that you need to know here. Potential energy equals the work done to combine the charges or, sorry, and the kinetic energy they will have when released. Now, this one's a little bit weird. It took me zero network to get it there. When I release it, it's going to have zero net, it's going to have zero kinetic energy later. However it goes, it's going to end up stopping with zero kinetic energy. That's a little bit stranger. There's other times where that's easier to see. Also, some students have asked me, can't I just take my net voltage and get my net force? Well, or my net potential energy and get force. All I have to do is divide by R again. No, you can't. This is zero joules. There's no way you're going to get that number. Now, why does that happen? These are scalars. Let me go ahead and mark these. And we'll go ahead and pick something else. You cannot go from a net scalar to a net voltage or vice versa. You can go from individual uh, scalars to, uh, to vectors. There's no problem with that. But you can't go from a net vector to a net scalar or vice versa. Why? This one requires Pythagorean theorem. This is strictly add. Here it's just multiplying or dividing by Q or by R. That's not a problem. Here, definitely a problem. It cannot be done.